Hello everybody, I'm Not As Fan, and I'm back with my Minnesota Golden Gophers uh, Dynasty mode series. This is episode 10 now of the Gopher Dynasty. Uh, we are doing a little bit of recruiting here before our game with Ohio State. Uh, trying to get uh, a couple four-star uh, athlete types in here to help the roster next season and we're making uh, we're talking to Carl Moore right there making some promises and all that so um, Ohio State comes to town here now and uh, this is gonna be a big big challenge for the Gophers another big big challenge was uh, getting my Hop Hodge HD PVR to uh, record these games back when I recorded the footage uh, for this particular episode uh, you're gonna have to bear with it as it skipped around a ton so I've done the best I can to edit uh, what highlights did come through. So this is going to be a condensed version, uh, very much so, of this game here. As you see Ohio State strike first on some very poor tackling on the defensive side. Look at three guys miss, and they give them credit for the touchdown at the pylon there. As you see prior in the game, um, he would not last long as he gets knocked out by injury. As you see Weber and the Gophers trying to come back here. Uh, that's a big hit and a fumble on their first attempt here. But they do get down the field, and as you see Weber find an opening, he will put a shoulder down and get in the end zone to tie the game. Now the Bucks come right back and uh, get another one on the board and already up 14-7. This is just way too easy here. You see the block by the wide receiver in the end zone. Goes in untouched here. As you see, the backup quarterback is in due to an injury to Terrell Pryor. So 21-7, um, the Buckeyes are handling the business here uh, quite easily. But Weber trying to cut into that lead here. As you see, a nice pass uh, on the scramble and then passing up field there to an open receiver, hoping to uh, cut this deficit maybe in half here. As that's his tight end uh, layer, I believe. So uh, then Weber striking from short distance there to layer once again in the end zone. A tough catch. Hangs on uh, despite the big hit. So uh, that cuts the halftime score. Uh, the deficit for the Gophers to 21-14, but still the uh, Buckeye fans feeling quite confident that made the trip to uh, the Twin Cities here, and uh, why shouldn't they be? There was a couple of very key interceptions in the second half. You see one of them here that ended up being the play of the game, uh, because that one uh, was uh, back for a pick six, but it wasn't the only big one here, as you see the Gophers right on the doorstep of scoring themselves, but turned right around here by a huge interception. This one will not go the distance, but it is a very impressive and a drive killer uh, in its own right. So just protecting the ball there, doesn't want to get stripped. As you see, 28-14 uh, Buckeyes at this point when they hit a nice long field goal. And a 57-yard field goal, though. That's, a, that's, that's impressive. So they add on one more score here to the tight end uh, for good measure, and they show their dominance, their Big Ten dominance here against the Gophers. Uh, the final score being 38-14, as you do see Ohio State number one in the country at this point when this game was played. Gopher fans disappointed, but I can't say that they uh, they didn't expect uh, to be <laughs> going down to defeat to the number one team in the nation here, so uh, they can't be too uh, disappointed, although they had their chances. They had some chances down there, so you see some com commits here, uh, one being the four-star we were going after, Smith, uh, labeled an athlete there, Ward and Stevens also in the fold here for next season. We do a little more recruiting uh, after we've learned those guys have committed. And uh, we're going to go hard uh, uh, on some of these guys here. They're really only three cal uh, star caliber left, but that's kind of what the Gophers uh, need to contend with here at this point. So they will um, try to shore up the, the positions they need here as we're talking to a kicker here. It's only a two star, but we're going to need a kicker next year, I do believe. So uh, now it's uh, on the road to East Lansing, and once again, uh, some issues with the uh, the recorder here. As a, It was more of an issue with uh, the laptop. I was uh, recording the footage, too, getting overheated and turning off and uh, making my footage skip. So we fixed it, we fixed it a bit, um, not having these issues with uh, newer videos. So shouldn't have to do as much piecing together uh, any, any more from here on out. But anyway, Sparty's ready. Michigan State fans are ready. Uh, Adam Weber not ready for the brush here and has to just get rid of this on the first drive for the Gophers. So uh, big linebacker Smith and the Spartans D holds here. And uh, when their offense comes on the field, look out because they're going downfield right away here and uh, with very little resistance as that's a big-time catch. 
and a big gain right off the bat for Michigan State. So uh, Gophers do counter with a nice uh, sack there, but on third and long, they're able to convert first and goal here with a nice catch with the uh, receiver coming back for the ball, and then uh, a very uncontested uh, touchdown run here to get themselves on the board and make this game 7 nothing. Michigan State here on their home field. So Weber's got to go to work here and get something done. He lobs this ball up to Bennett. Probably should have been knocked away. Maybe should have been called incomplete. But they say he got one foot down, and that's good enough in college football. So as you see here, the question is, was the other foot out of bounds before the foot was down? And that's very debatable. But uh, they get credit for it nonetheless. And so here's a big pass over the middle as Weber takes some heat, takes a big hit, but does connect. Handing off to Duan Bennett again and running hard for a first down. So uh, then they uh, they bring the blitz and a perfect timing for a screen pass to Bennett. And he's going to walk into the end zone to tie this ball game. So a great play call by the Gopher offense at exactly the right time. It, uh, it countered the blitz very well. And Bennett uh, basically just walked down the sideline untouched for a score. And uh, the Gophers are pumped that they've tied this game on the road here. You know, Big Ten football, hard to win games on the road, especially in a place like Michigan State. Okay, so 7-7 ball game. You see seven plays, 69 yards on that drive, taking uh, just under, uh, just yeah, under two minutes to uh, tie the ball game. But Michigan State storms right back on their end here, driving downfield. Uh, pretty much at will here and you see a touchdown pass uh, of their own to take the lead back 14-7 uh, quite easy for Michigan State and their offense on that drive so as we're nearing halftime Weber uh, looking for McKnight and finding him wide open here and a great uh, run after the catch gets them down into the red uh, the edge of the red zone here and um, no no real rush on Weber what to speak of and he's able to pick apart this defense in just a couple big plays as you see Lair go into the end zone uh, for an easy touchdown there for the Gophers. So just like that, uh, the Gophers come back and shred Michigan State's defense. So it's a 14-all tie at halftime, as you see here. And coming into the third quarter, uh, not a whole lot of scoring in the third quarter, but a lot of ball control by Michigan State. And they are able to uh, go on a methodical drive here, killing clock, basically killing... Uh, well, there were some, there were some uh, three and outs on both sides in the third quarter, but... Uh, with with the third quarter in the books now, uh, early fourth quarter, looking to uh, score here as Michigan State is very close and uh, looking to just run it on in here. But then the unthinkable happens, big time fumble at about the 10 yard line. Ting Tinsley scoops this one and no one's going to get him. Cousins isn't fast enough to catch him here. Running back maybe, but nope, he's not going to get him. That's a defensive score for the Gophers as uh, Tinsley goes and celebrates with Goldie. That is a huge turnover because they were uh, right on the doorstep of taking the lead themselves was Michigan State, but the turnover in the score turns the way this game the way of the Gophers instead. As you see Cousins chasing Tinsley to no avail. That is a touchdown and a huge turnover in this game. Uh, just might be the deciding factor. So uh, the Gophers trying to salt this one away with about two minutes left. Bennett will be stopped just short of a first down here. So uh, punted back to Michigan State and their final chance here. Big uh, completion over the middle for a first down, and they are driving, and uh, could this be for the tying score? But there's a nice play there by the Gopher defense to uh, step in front of a third down pass. So it comes down to fourth down here with a minute and a half left. Cousins uh, surveying the field. He's got some time, but finally uh, just took too much time, and that ball's knocked out of his hands, and that's a turnover. So uh, Hazy, the fullback, salted away with a, a big first down, and that is uh, going to be a go for victory on the road. So they've dropped the game to Ohio State at home, but they're able to rebound on the road here at Michigan State with a 21-14 hard-fought victory. The uh, Michigan State fans are not going to be happy about this one. They saw a big-time opportunity kind of go by the boards here. Michigan but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. So the Gophers celebrate on the road the seven-point victory. And uh, your player of the game is Adam Weber. Uh, not very uh, big on the stats, but he had the two touchdown passes, and that'll do. So that'll wrap up Episode 10. Come on back next time when we continue the late-season Gopher dynasty here. Thanks, guys.